Controversial subjects with the facts can be tense, but we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Um, so today, yes, we're talking about masks. Obviously, there's been a level of controversy surrounding masks, Which, okay. <laughs> mostly seen in America. Obviously, it exists in many other countries, but even being on the Internet and us releasing content around it, it seems very centered in this kind of like political spectrum of America, whereas lots of other countries just used masks from the get go. Or if they didn't, it wasn't that hard to get their citizens to use masks. So, I don't know. Do you want to start with your study today? Uh, you- yeah, sure. Oh, I'm be trying to tongue box. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, yeah, I, I'm i going to start with this study. And then I think let's just talk pretty openly about all of this stuff. Because, uh-huh. I mean, we read, like, at, for our job, we're always reading about coronavirus. And I think things have changed a lot. And, like, let's just have an honest conversation. Because I think okay. it might be interesting for people. But... One thing I will say is that there, when going through a global pandemic, everyone's favorite word, unprecedented, these things haven't happened before. So science is actually being utilized, tested, created in a way like never before. Really it's on the fly. On the fly. Pre, I'm reading preprints all the time, which like I would never read before because everything would be properly like vetted. Mm-hmm. But it's really important to read these preprints because things are happening so fast that we can't allow the scientific process to work in the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, so there has been a lot of debate uh, from the get-go with coronavirus about um, – how it's transferred like yeah, from the yeah, for every aspect of it like how it works why it makes you sick what your yeah. symptoms are how to prevent it what we should be doing that's all been in contention almost from day one not necessarily everything equally in contention yeah but obviously we're all aware i i just gonna bring up i saw a really amazing post the other day from our friend science sam who's on instagram and on twitter she had made a video kind of explaining why her analogy and she was doing it with visuals was imagine you had a puzzle and you don't actually know what the puzzle picture is yeah and so you're putting pieces together and then as you started getting clumps of information you realize oh this this whole clump probably goes down here but slowly you know what i mean you you find one piece and another and they're completely disparate and you can't tell how they relate until you get more and more information. So I just thought that was a really amazing analogy. That's a great analogy. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Like, I think I've seen some rhetoric against masks because people are feeling like, well, people told us one thing at the beginning and now you can't trust anyone. And it's like, oh, it's, Okay, that's a weird train of thought. Yeah, yeah. Should we be more empathetic to those people? No, no. I'm just even me going. Yeah, it's like a bad. It's just like okay, I have to try and like you know what I mean, rein that back. But um, I I think that is the way a lot of people think when they don't understand the complexity of science and how it works. They think, okay, well, I was told this, and now I'm being told this. Now I can't trust anything. Mm -hmm. When really, it's like we are all having to figure out how we move forward. And the WHO, for example, has, in my opinion, made some pretty like drastic mistakes, but. Also, there's a lot of reasons for that. A, they don't want to cause panic sometimes, or B, they like essentially don't necessarily know and they must have protocols set in place that I probably want them to have mm-hmm. that's making it harder for them. Sure. But either way, as of July 7th, that's when this study came out um, and really helped us understand that likely um, coronavirus is being transferred through air droplets in from talking, and this is why masks are so important. Do you now. mean respiratory droplets in the air? Respiratory like droplets from yes, human like mouths. you can think of it more as like it transfers through the air. Whereas before, I do really think people were really scared about surfaces. People were always thinking like, "Oh my god, my mail just got here. Like this is how I'm going to get it." And now people are realizing through studies like this that the it does transfer like quite easily through the air. You are looking at me. Like uh, yeah, I, I, sorry, I'm not. I still think it is on surfaces, but maybe I understand what you're saying. I don't want to give the wrong impression. I don't think they're calling it fully airborne, though. No, but but I think that this is what I'm trying to say. These studies are really new, and the one I'm about to talk about is really interesting, and it is explaining that it is coming from people talking in a way that we need to be wearing masks at all times. Uh-huh. Including, I think, even like in a park, for example, in my opinion. Okay. But it's all in flux. And I don't know. I kind of felt like early on, obviously, like the surfaces thing. I'm just trying to think about like culturally. Do you not feel like it's shifted now? People might think that. Like now we're all of a sudden being told to wear masks. But earlier we were kind of being told that like maybe surfaces were more of an issue. Sure. But people might think what? People might think now like, well, who do I trust? Because I feel like early on, no one told me this. And now I don't want to wear a mask because I don't think it's even that important. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. I think that 
is a problem that people face in science all the time. But it's like, if you go back far enough, we used to think the earth was flat and then we moved on from that belief. And we used to think X, Y, and Z. Science is constantly of reevaluating itself. And especially, yes, in a time of a pandemic with brand new information, we're going to be reevaluating a lot of the things we're learning. I, yeah. I do agree that people might be getting confused and some of the discomfort or pushback is because it feels like they were lied to when in fact it was just here's the best information we have right now and it may or may not change. Exactly. And I think this the video that we just made is that's why it's so important. And I love the video we made because I think it's very clear. But for me, I'm just trying to empathize and figure out how we talk about this and make people wear masks. You know what I mean? Because they're obviously feeling a reason that they shouldn't. So it was July 7th that this was done and they actually used this really complex like light laser light scattering technology to look at people talking and then figure out literally how many droplets come out of their mouth, how big they are. And based on how big they are, they can figure out how long they'll stay in the air and how much virus will be in them if you're sick because they can now understand how the virus actually appears within these droplets. And their big question was, how do these droplets sort of function? And they're now really using physics to understand how. And essentially, that one minute of loud speaking generates a thousand aerosols, four micrometers in diameter, that remain airborne for at least eight minutes. Wow. And that those airborne molecules can have the virus in them and you could easily get them into you from mm -hmm. that, from inhaling them, et cetera, into your body. So this is scientific. I thought this was funny in my head. I was like, this is scientific evidence to wear a mask, but also to like shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 it was just like, it's like, it's talking is, and right. as we learned from our experiment, a big issue. And one thing that they found is really interesting is that every time you speak, your droplets become dehydrated and have less liquid in them as they move through the air. And as droplets become, quote unquote, dehydrated, they actually end up becoming lighter and therefore stay in the air for longer. Hmm. So it's like they were able to look at the size and they said that, for example, if a, drop, if a droplet with an initial diameter of 50 micrometers shrinks to 10 micrometers, the speed at which it falls to the ground decreases from 6.8 centimeters per second to 0 0.35 centimeters per second. Right. Okay, so... Well. And what they're finding is that when they're studying these droplets, they are decreasing in size really quickly when they leave your mouth. And therefore, they're actually staying, not hitting the ground nearly as fast as maybe they would have thought when they were like, oh, that's the size of a droplet. So therefore, mm -hmm. it falls right. this fast. And they also really revealed that um, TH noise. It's <laughs> as a gay, we, we say this all the time. <laughs> uh, maybe just me. Um that that creates a lot of droplets. And so in the English language, there's a lot of ways in which we communicate that create a lot. And then also that speaking loudly creates way more droplets. So bars, for example, singing, these types of things are like actually a concern. So when we think about opening bars, it's like that should maybe be one of the last things. Like if you think about yelling over music, like mm -hmm. that's actually a huge issue. Concerts, big issue for the actual things that we do during them. Right. Whereas, you know, talking in a park, I guess, or other places where there's not, you're not being the ambient competing noise with, is, yeah, yes, pretty low. exactly. Anyways, um, there's a lot more information like that I read if you want to know, but the main point is just we really need to be wearing masks. According to the newest updated science, it is transferring from droplets that we are talking and creating coming out of our mouths all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a, a bit of a scary image it paints of just these like droplets floating around everywhere. It would be interesting if there was some, imagine that laser technology could exist everywhere. Or you know how sometimes there's like UV technology so you can see sunscreen or you can see certain things in the air. It would be very interesting if there was ever like goggles created and you could just see the virus in the air and you'd have a good sense of like, is I don't know. Obviously, that's that's not so exist. interesting. Well, this well, this technology is really. You'd be able to see the the moisture. You wouldn't be able to see the virus. Yeah, I think that. I mean, again, the limits of technology and science are in the future are things that we can't grasp. But yeah, true, the technology is really complicated and interesting. And reading about it, I just love. You know those moments where you're like, how people thought of this? This is mm -hmm. incredible. Um, uh, but it's definitely so sort of expensive and specific, the situations they're studying, that there's no way that a and goggle could exist right now where we're just like, oh, obviously. Clouds. And yeah. I mean, what's interesting as well is we know that depending on your level of infection, you would potentially be having, you know, more virus per drop or per whatever size of respiratory droplet yeah, than they somebody who's not as sick. 
And so those those level like the, even if you know how much is in the air in terms of respiratory droplets, you don't necessarily know how much virus is there unless you're collecting it and analyzing that data as well. Yeah, for sure. And they actually used another model of the RNA load of virus per droplet, and then they averaged it for this study. So they are starting to sort of understand how mm. much um, virus is likely in the oral fluid of someone who is sick. Right. But the one thing I'll say is that like a big part of this study that they need you to know is they used another study that did, the people were quite sick in it. So these are Using again, like fully infected, fully yes. symptomatic people who have coronavirus. Yeah. Or so, COVID-19. so essentially what they do is they take that study where the people are really sick. They're probably in a hospital. Um, and so therefore they're understanding their viral load. And then they're now putting it into a separate study. That's just mm-hmm. about how we talk with droplets, assuming the size of droplets from that study and the amount of virus in this second study. So again, it's like, you need to understand that. We're not saying that everyone is going around uh, and, you know, speaking with this virus in your face because Mm. the people who, with the viral load they're using would have been very sick. Right, okay. But there is a lot of, still we don't know about asymptomatic carriers and um, just important information to you, for you to know to not be like so scared, but obviously we need to wear masks because it's transferring through talking. Wow. I mean, yeah, okay. Uh, I, I I was just going to go to a little comment corner and then we can go back and talk about our personal experiment. Is that cool? Yeah, for and sure. And how that relates to your study. Yeah. Comment corner. Okay, so I have a comment here from Jen APST. <laughs> I don't know, is that how you say that? G-E-N-E-P-C. People have the weirdest <laughs> Apple iTunes names. I feel like they, like you sign up and I don't even know where you put it. They just yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's not one where it like is related to your actual name. So, I mean, hopefully that's Jen APST. Thanks for leaving this. It says, I absolutely adore this podcast. I've had some bad experiences with science in school in the past, but this has rekindled my love for the subject uh-huh. and reminded me of how much I love to learn about science and in general as well. Such an awesome podcast. That's really nice. Oh, that's so cool. Because I, so we, we kind of get that message, especially when we meet people in person. We've been told that a lot that, you know, I, I hated science or I didn't like it before. And this kind of opened my eyes to it. I'm always curious how far that goes for people, because obviously we, we might have had that experience in some way with like a teacher that kind of inspired us. But I never had it where I really thought I disliked science and then came around to loving it. Oh, you know wow. What I mean. Yeah. I never disliked it. That's true. Yeah. I, I might have thought. It might, I think in grade nine, I remember thinking, learning certain, what as, is this? <laughs> certain aspects. I remember thinking this is boring and you also have to like learn a lot of history in the beginnings of science. Yeah. Old white dudes. And you're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or I just remember like those electric grids you have to draw and like explain. Like, yeah. Yeah. Remember? Oh my God. I, remember <laughs> I was like that. the same for me, bro. I am not going to be an electrician. Engineering. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I might've had a little <laughs> bit of that transformation, but it's interesting to be like, I didn't like science and now I do. So that's really awesome. That makes me feel really good. It also makes me happy because I sometimes think like even even when I explain that past study, I, in my head, I feel like I'm talking to people who love science. Like mm-hmm. I for, like I feel like sometimes we go into a detail that I like about this podcast, mm-hmm. but it really makes me happy to think that someone is using this podcast and maybe doesn't love science to learn and get mm-hmm. their science information. Like that's always very meaningful, I think, to me. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jen APST. If you want to leave us a comment on iTunes or on YouTube or on Twitter, anywhere, Instagram, we'll hopefully read it on our show. So just leave us a message. That sounded like it went together. Leave us a message. Uh, So let's talk a little bit about the experiment that we did. Yeah. So we actually created a video on our YouTube channel documenting this. It was a look at masks versus no masks. And we, we were inspired by this post that I saw on Twitter by a person named Dr. Rich Davis, who works as a microbiologist in a lab. And he had you know, use Petri dishes with agar agar mediums on them and coughed in front of some, talked to some, sang to some, and um, sneezed on some with and without a mask. (laughs) And then he let them, the colonies, like, grow and shared that with the the mask. Without a mask, there was lots of different colonies for the different activities, and with a mask, there was essentially zero that showed up. And so we were like, we want to redo this and try it ourselves. We actually, there's a couple extra things that weren't in the video that we'll share now, so we first tried it by doing at home experiments. Like, do you, you obviously remember this? <laughs> do you remember? I was like the only person there quarantined. Um, <laughs> basically we ordered like these kits online that were just, you know, make, do your own, make your own agar at home. But 
what happened so you was, actually made the solution yeah, yeah we, and we had filmed the whole thing boiled we like, it yeah we like made the solution we sterilized as much as we could but i think we didn't sterilize enough because everything was just contaminated it was real they made really cool plates but even the controls had like contamination all in them that hadn't we really did it in our them. kitchen yeah like, there was lots of bacteria there probably and I, yeah, yeah we just did it loosely and then we were like <laughs> out so we reached out to uh, a friend who connected us with, with another friend in a lab who was able to provide us with these proper petri dishes that had been in an autoclave oh and when they showed up honey pristine yes i saw the difference it made me really miss working in a lab not that yeah. i ever worked with petri dishes in a lab but talk, talking to her and then she connected us to a few other people that we'll get into in a minute um it was just a really cool experience and to know that they're literally every day she studies fungi and their effects on humans and the ones that you know why sometimes things go wrong in fungi that would be normal in a human can suddenly start being harmful for a human it's just like that's so cool i feel stupid but i didn't really know that we have like fungi living within us regularly so she was like you know in your normal microbiota you can have some come out on the plates you might actually have fungi growing that's so oh um i love smart scientists they make yeah. me feel so calm i know and then they're <laughs> both so young and i'm like oh, you're, you're so cool and your job's amazing but ultimately we redid the experiment do you want to talk about it at all like no I, I mean i love i actually even wanted to go back like did you um because i really think you were the most mo like you really got this video going um did you have a relationship to masks like i think a lot of people in america especially science communicators we know are getting really frustrated and they're like we need to make this video um is that what did that have anything to do with you wanting to start doing this or was it just Not like too oh intensely. i'm interested yeah i found i thought it was such a clever way to talk about masks and i thought hey we have an, a big platform on youtube i saw this tweet that um dr davis had posted and was, and it had done really well on twitter and i thought oh my gosh that'd be really cool to recreate that and show the whole process instead of just the result um and obviously for good reason for being like okay a it would be extra data like creating our own little study not only on supplementary to his but then we did it ourselves and we involved the lab so we had two separate cool. um, trials and it was cool to show the process of science like, yeah but ultimately yes i i was like i believe why not test this? If we're seeing results like this, we should all be wearing masks, even if they're not 100% protective, which they're certainly not. I think we know that they're potentially helping. Yeah. yeah. Even even if it's like 1%, in my mind, I'm like, why not? I don't see it as an affront to my like freedoms, basically, which I know a lot of people in America have different opinions about. Um, so yeah, it was just a mix of wanting to see what our results would be and then knowing what his results were being like this is a great way to talk about the efficacy and i guess doing the experiment did exactly we were just like oh my gosh yeah, wear was, a mask like it it's was wild. really shocking so I think it was shocking if you look at our video we can talk about it now you can probably go on our instagram and twitter to see our results so we had one experiment at home that was just on sort of normal they're called lb plates and that is for regular bacteria to sort of thrive it has all the nutrients they need but in the lab they used this other kind of agar that had sheep's blood in it and all these other it's nutrients. red and bloody yes and that was more similar to the twitter experiment we had seen and then they had an incubator and they did a whole bunch of tests we didn't include in the video that were like some in an incubator that was an anaerobic chamber and some in a like a chamber a regular incubator well, and anaerobic's not having oxygen correct because yeah. they thought you know different bacteria will grow so if you cough on a plate and you put one in an anaerobic chamber there are bacteria within you that survive better without oxygen so they're more likely to thrive there hmm. we were just we were curious what would happen and would it be different in the different chambers ultimately they had basically the same results so we really had three of our own tests um and they all showed almost the exact same results as Dr. Davis. So all of the mask versions showed no bacterial cultural growth on them, or at least no visible bacterial culture. It's possible that they were growing because it was smaller. They could have been growing slower. Um, and in general, the sneezing had the highest level of bacterial growth. Singing was high, but then the most shocking was talking. talking. Yeah. So that's why I think the study I brought up is so important. And I think even you saying like, whether it's 1%, or like I'm still gonna wear a mask. It's like I think we need to start being like it is a very big deal because I think right. when you conglomerate this up to date research I just mentioned and you actually talk about the study that you just viscerally did, you can see there are no bacterial colonies growing on any of the ones where we wear a mask, yeah. and then they are where we don't, and we know it transfers through droplets. Yeah. So I just want to also clarify for people, as we did in the video, 
as Dr. Davis did, yes, this is bacteria and coronavirus is a virus. So we are not technically seeing coronavirus. This doesn't show that coronavirus was on the plates, but it's really a proxy for how many droplets actually make it to the plate when you hold it about a foot to a foot and a half from your face, talk to it. And then we can safely assume that a proportionate amount of virus would probably go there. But ultimately, viruses are so small, we wouldn't ever be able to see them by eye. If we wanted to look at those plates, maybe under a microscope or some specialized devices, we could see them. But the bacteria is just a great way because after, especially with an incubator, after a day, you're already seeing colonies with your naked eye. Well, there you go. But the droplets that those bacteria are in that you studied are the same droplets that we know based on the studies of coronavirus the virus spreads in, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, there's a direct comparison. And I just think, I think wearing a mask right now during this global pandemic is so important. It is, it is like obviously physical distancing. We all know we're talking about that culturally, but I think masks, it's like, it really is something that I think everyone just needs to remember when they leave the house and the best to be like, oh yeah, it's, it's stopping my literal spit from going anywhere else. I can go do whatever it is that I'm allowed to do wherever I am. But just knowing for myself that I'm stopping my spit while I talk from hitting whoever it is that I talk to, who's probably someone I care about. It's just like, that is going to help. Um, if this information is something you want to explain to them to explain why you're wearing a mask and them to put one on, like, I don't know how far we go with that, but it really right now, according to the science is so, so, so important. Yeah. Some, I didn't actually see a lot of this conversation, but some people either asking, you know, genuinely or people who just want to criticize and find what's wrong with it their argument would be that well viruses are so much smaller and so they're able to get through the mask um and my only argument to that is like we don't really have evidence yes or no for that right now that's totally plausible that could be true but what i would say to talk about that in this particular experiment when we're measuring droplets that land on the plate is that we know that the actual exposure to the amount of virus impacts how sick you get and whether or not you end up being needing treatment. So if you have a high viral load exposure, you're more likely to get sick and test positive. If you have a very, very low exposure, then maybe you won't get sick or maybe you won't, you'll be asymptomatic. So if we know that some droplets are being stopped by a mask, even if it was only the largest ones, say 50%, then we're actually decreasing our viral load that's coming out of our mouth with a mask. So even if there are particles that just happen to be small enough spit particles that say go through the mask, again, we don't know. There's not enough test or study to really look into this, but let's say it's plausible. At the very least, the mask is effectively stopping the, any big droplets that would also contain the virus. Hmm. It's, it's not like magically the virus ones are all getting through and then just the bacteria ones are Magic. getting trapped, right? <laughs> so that's all I want to say on that. I think it was a really cool experiment. You could try and it yeah, at home. Yeah, we should say we were using homemade cloth masks. That's true. We weren't oh, yeah. wearing any 95 masks. That's a completely different thing. We were talking about actually putting two layers of cotton over mm -hmm. your mouth with a homemade mask, in, which lots of people are doing. In the lab, they used disposable non-surgical masks. Yeah, so those which you can buy. ones, you see, you can buy them like in large So they packs. worked in, this, in similar ways. Yeah, and we had basically the exact same result the only thing that was different from the Twitter results was the coughing, uh, which we found was really interesting. So both dry of, coughing, though, I, even when I was doing it, I was like, there's nothing coming. Like, yeah. it just feels so like. So we, I hadn't thought of it in the moment because a sneeze, clearly you feel like the spit particles yeah. come out, even when you're faking it, which we had to do. And we said in the video, but the coughing on mine and on the lab results were just very minimal. But whereas the guy who did it on Twitter, he had a lot in his cough. Interestingly, our friends in the lab had one other person do it just for fun and their coughing had a lot more. Well, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like, like coughing, like ours was dry, but I feel like some people so, are yeah, maybe yeah. better at being like, like, so, <laughs> so gross, I, um, but, like, creating yeah, saliva. Dr. Davis had tweeted us being like, you know, I really actually made sure my mouth was wet before I cough. Yeah. And obviously if you're not sick, you're not, you might have wetness in your mouth, but then even more so you're not having that phlegm that when someone actually coughs, it's to relieve that moisture in your lungs like get it out of there so obviously we didn't have that but one other interesting point that the lab team we were working with brought up is that also people have different microbiota in their like hmm. in the oral microbiota so it's possible that one of them's bacterial like colonies just flourished more on the petri dishes 
uh, in different circumstances than the other person. So I thought that was really interesting to think about. Obviously, again, bacteria not related to the coronavirus, but it was just like a really cool... But related to droplets. Related to droplets. Yeah. Yeah, Today, sorry. we should maybe call this episode masks and droplets or something <laughs> to make it more clear, but it's th- those droplets are what are really important right now. Uh, I'm curious, what do you think will happen going forward, Greg? Like, do you what? think... <laughs> what? You mean in general, in the world? Yeah, just in the world. No. Um, oh my God. With relation <laughs> okay, to... Like with relation to mask adherence does that make sense like with especially in america but in canada too there's lots of people who don't want to wear masks who don't wear it do you think that people before before the end will come around to it um it's so interesting because like everything varies so much i think based on your localized community and how things are happening where you are and almost like where you are within like a 10 kilometer radius you know what i mean like i think Mm -hmm. that's how at least i as someone who stays home all the time and is really like you know reading science all the time. So I guess I'm extra sort of like aware and maybe more scared. I don't know. I stay home and I just think about that sort of bubble. Um, I think that obviously where we are right now, like the numbers are very low for transmission and I even sort of look up where exactly they are. So sometimes when I'm out wearing a mask, like walking our dog and I see people without a mask, I, I kind of go, oh, okay, well, the numbers are low. I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe they're so educated that they're just on a quick little thing that they're like, right. like, because of course, like everyone should be wearing a mask. And, uh, and to be honest, I've like twice left my house and walked my dog and realized I wasn't wearing a mask like halfway through. And then been like, well, according to the science, like I'm not going to go be fine. six yeah. feet near anyone and like, and justified it for myself. So I assume people who aren't wearing masks right. are kind Do of that as well. at least figuring out all the parameters. But then sometimes obviously I'm like, maybe that's not true. <laughs> and when I think about places like America where the numbers are so high, I'm just like, you need to be wearing masks. And I would assume that if that happened in a place like Toronto or in our community, everyone would Hmm. like get it and put on masks. You mean if we had like thousands and thousands of cases in Toronto? Yeah. I just like, I think then my, me leaving my house would be a lot different. I think I would be more like, you need to wear a mask or like if someone came up to me, I'd be like, do not like come near me. Like unless wearing a mask. Like if you leave your house and you forgot, you turn around, you go get it. Oh my God. Yeah. And like, like, whereas um, now because you're on a walk and you're like, I probably won't interact with everyone. But if we were in that situation, I do think I'd be like, I actually don't want to ever leave this house without masks. Exactly. So that's what I mean. When you ask me, I'm like, I don't know what community I should picture answering Mm -hmm. that question. So I was using ours and then like, uh, I don't know, America, like anywhere in Texas right now, I would be like, everyone needs to wear a mask. But another thing in Toronto is that businesses, you have to have a mask to go in it. So I've never had that issue because I'm always wearing one when I'm going anywhere, even though I don't go many places. It's like, I walk in freely. I do my thing. It feels quite normal. Mm -hmm. But I do understand that if someone wasn't wearing a mask, like I, I think in businesses that they would say that you have to wear one now in Ontario. So like people, I think I've just abided by that and there hasn't been much backlash. And I think that's something that I can't relate to, to America. It's just like, it's, the like law. the intensity of it. Yeah. yeah I mean, no one I, really I, had I'm that back. I'm sure backlash. there's levels that don't make it to the press. Like I imagine a convenience store has to deal with people who just walk in and don't have a mask on. And maybe not extreme abuse necessarily, but the abuses that come from someone who's like, I'm not wearing a mask. And then that clerk or whatever having to decide, am I going to let you buy things? So then wait, because I have a question. Cause, sorry, I just mean like a chain grocery store has the infrastructure to be like, no, no, you leave. We have a security guard. You can't be in here if you don't yeah. have a mask. But if you're like an independent shop, you might have to deal with yeah. someone coming in. But there are laws in place here, especially in restaurants and high traffic places where they could lose their licenses if people are coming in without masks and things like so that. So have you, have you heard any news like that? Because I honestly I haven't. haven't. You're right. But so, all I meant is... If it doesn't get to an extreme, if I think anything that extreme that happens would probably get reported in the news. But the other day I was at a convenience store and I didn't see anyone without a mask, but it occurred to me, like, I really hope everyone's being respectful, especially to the people who are working in a place like this, who are just a family running their own business and probably don't want to have to enforce a rule because it's like extremely awkward to have Mm -hmm. someone walk in and that someone might be nice and might've actually forgot. And they might say, you can't be in here without a mask. And that person might go, okay. Or it might be someone who walked there and forgot, but it's kind of a dick and is like, I'm not, just let me shop. Come on. And then they might have like, that wouldn't get reported. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. I just hope that people are being sensitive to, a lot of people are put in a position right now where they might have to enforce it and it might be incredibly uncomfortable for them because they have to confront their customers now. Okay, yeah. One thing I'll say is I do remember that there was a small little protest against masks 
masks in the in TTC Canada. in Toronto, remember? But it was like, I remember seeing the photos and seeing the headlines and looking and it was, it was like, like 20 people. Yeah, it was small <laughs> enough. And then it just went away that I was like, okay, good, good. job. <laughs> <laughs> like, got to not know this anymore. Um, <laughs> not <laughs> my friends. <laughs> but I also think that it's just, it's really important to understand and remember like it's like masks are so sexy because it's literally <laughs> just a physical telling to people that you are altruistic, that yeah. you are a human. It's like even that example, you're wearing a mask because if you want to go into a convenience store or you want to go do anything like in your local neighborhood, wherever you live, you want the people who you're interacting with selling you things to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like that's just, or B, you actually want to save the lives of your friends. Like, mm -hmm. like you want to make sure that you're contributing to decreasing a virus that we're all, everyone on this whole planet can come together and be scared of. So it's, it's great for that, but it's also protecting the people around you who you love. To me, it's such a visual sign of like care that I really um, want it to be considered sexy and to be con considered cool. And I mean, I know I'm a huge Bad Bunny fan, but he was like wearing masks, you know what I mean? Before even coronavirus came <laughs> you out. You are so, so There's so much parts of fashion, like in like Japan, in different places, like in East Asian countries, literally the fashion has a lot to do with culture. They've had more, um, dealt with more epidemics. And it's just like, it's cool. Like you can, you it, for me, it's like, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. I think I have nice eyes, but like, I don't necessarily like love my cheeks. Cover them <laughs> up. Or like, I don't know. Like you don't look necessarily bad. It's kind of mysterious. Like I do think there's a world where it's just like embrace it. It, it It's important. It's altruistic, but it's also kind of sexy. It can be cool. And it doesn't have to be something that like, I don't know. It's that big a deal. I feel like there, I, I really, I feel like there's something about coolness that's so weirdly part of it like wearing a helmet it's like uh, i love wearing a helmet insane. and when i see someone wearing a helmet i'm like you're smart you're protecting your brilliant brain yeah <laughs> yeah i mean like yeah that's true and there's also something about not wearing a helmet that to me is like okay you're obviously trying to like you care about the way you look which is also yeah. kind of hot but like it's also not sometimes it's like really i don't oh, know yeah no as soon as i see someone without a helmet i think you're, you're really in you're, <laughs> you're insecure like you care you're so insecure. much you, like, know and what I, I'm, you know, everyone's insecure. Like I care about how people perceive me, but I'm also not, not more than my own safety. <laughs> so I see someone without a helmet and I'm like, you care so much more about how people who aren't even interacting with you on the road and the sidewalk see you than the risk that you might fall and bang your head and be severely injured so this i mean that's interesting i i like i do agree with you i know you have a you're really intense about wear helmets. a helmet people yeah, yeah and i think we should do an episode about helmets actually yes. like, write that one out producer oh yeah get it in the back um <laughs> but i think that that is part of it and i think yeah i think as if we can reframe it like wearing a helmet is sexy it is cool it is about protecting your life but masks are like even sexier because it's about protecting other people's lives like yeah. i just i don't know i don't know how maybe famous people Hype house, sway house. <laughs> like you're not doing a very good job because none of those oh freaking influencers are wearing masks. But it's like you need to wear them because you need to make them cool for young people. And then we don't even have to like get in this mess in the same way. That's true. I mean, that's just one thing. I don't know. That's not true. Like people should also just wear them because like legally they have to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're right though. Sometimes it's not so easy to just like tell someone to do something. It has to be turned into something that people are like actually think is cool or are better to do yeah yeah exactly actually, and we have really cool science ones and that like helps me be like yeah uh, and honestly people recognize us on the street a lot like i've noticed with those on and i'm like i bet because they like you know what i mean they're just like yeah, they're their brain goes like wait science too gay is walking on the street with like <laughs> yeah, you're just not wearing those i actually like the anomin how do you say that word anonymity oh my god anonymity and thank you and anonymity but then yeah sometimes i'm like oh why are people no I, I enjoy when people say hi but i just get, i get more caught off guard when i'm wearing a mask and oh my god okay so if you are a fan of asap science and you see mitch on the street you better be calling from across the street saying we like you do not come up and talk to him he will not be in the best well man. well just especially in a pandemic yeah i don't <laughs> know like if you know i don't want to be that close to you some random woman started talking to us the other day who did not know ASAP Science. She just wanted to talk about our dog. And we were like, yeah, why are you really doing intense. this? Like, you don't touch our dog. And <laughs> she was on a run. She didn't have a mask on. And it was just like, it was so weird. I mean, it was weird. It made me think, like, I don't know how much of this was her trying. Like, as soon as I think we started to back away and show physical cues of, like, can you please stay away? She mm -hmm. almost started being like, no, but, like, she almost started yeah, testing nothing, it a nothing bit. Nothing was said about masks, but she 
just was like, oh my gosh, let me pet your dog. And we were like, uh, I don't, I don't know. Like we kind of put him away and you know, we're passive. Kept, so we didn't be like, no, there's a pandemic. You're not touching our dog. And we just assumed she'd pick up on like the discomfort. Of but us. it felt like she started to yeah, press almost because be it like, was like, wait, why? It was really oh weird experience. Gosh. But again, it made it so me uncomfortable. realize just like, if we all had masks on, it would just be like easier. I would still stay six feet apart, but anyways, very, Ooh. like very, um, fascinating. Wear a mask, watch our video to understand why you should wear a mask. Mm -hmm. And there's the Petri dishes are right in front of us right now. What are you going to do with them? They're kind of pretty, um, but they well, they're starting to smell really bad and they're just going to grow bigger. So, gross. so yeah, when I opened it, I was like to take photos and stuff. I realized how bad it smells. It's like, literally like bad breath. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's also, yeah, it's just like not a pleasant <laughs> smell. And now, now that I know the strong version of it, if I get the faintest whiff of it, I'm like, Oh, Oh, it's disgusting. Um, so I think I need to like get rid of those. And okay. Let's take lots of, of photos though. Cause they're kind of cool. And pretty. Yeah, no, they are really pretty. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. Hopefully you're wearing masks and being a proponent for masks wearing. And next week we have an amazing episode because we're interviewing Katie Mack, ah! who is an astrophysicist. And we're talking about the end of the universe. And she just wanted, I think maybe one of the smartest people I've ever spoken to. And so, oh, it's just amazing. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye.